Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. By golly, we have a lot of stuff to get through in today's video. Yet more updated performance results of the RTX 40 series, Narve 31 being confirmed by AMD to be released this year, and a lot more besides. I and mean, of course, we're going to get right into it after this message from the video sponsor. Before we continue, I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Crypto.com. Crypto.com is a centralized exchange where you can buy and sell 250 plus cryptocurrencies with 0% fee crypto trading. They also offer a crypto visa debit card, which allows up to 5% cash back on purchases. And other nice perks like having access to airport lounges, access to Netflix, Amazon Prime, Spotify, and more. As well as all of the buying and selling features where you can buy at true cost. Crypto.com also offers services like trading and staking to earn additional revenue on your investments. You can also grow your portfolio by receiving rewards up to 14.5% on your crypto assets. Join 50 million plus users buying and selling 250 plus cryptocurrencies using our referral link, crypto.com slash app slash redgamingtech, which you can also find linked in the video description below. Right, let's begin with AMD because this is going to be pretty quick. AMD in their recent financial event has essentially confirmed that Narve 31 is going to launch this year. So they're going to start with the high end essentially and then release other SKUs like Narve 32 and 33 at a later date. At least according to what's been written here. Uh, credit by the way to Grayman actually for noticing this and it does match up to what I've kind of mentioned a couple of times at this point. I'm hearing that 31 is going to launch in November and early next year is basically when we're going to see 33. Um, I'm going to be talking about this more in another video. I've actually already filmed that video so I'm going to be wearing the same clothes basically. So yeah, um, magic of editing and all of that jazz. However, long story short, 31 is almost assured this year. 33 is going to be most likely next year. Uh, this is a little different to the original timeline. I'd heard it was going to be somewhere like 31 launching in October and then probably a month a little bit later for 33 but just because of oversupply of graphics cards you guys know the drill by now that's kind of changed uh, furthermore according to Grayman there have been major improvements to the vcash technology which is going to be seen in well Ryzen vcash um, this also matches something that I've been hearing as well um, but I think I may have reported it. I honestly don't remember. But yeah, he has also said this. Um, basically speaking, it fixes a plethora of issues. The most important and big one was the heat. So I'm sure most of you know that the 5800 was the only processor in the Zen 3 lineup which benefited with Vcash. There were a few reasons for it, but one of the big ones was basically heat density. Um, so this has allegedly been much improved with the new implementation. At the moment, I'm not 100% what AMD have done to improve this, but yeah, ultimately it's only a good thing. I've heard that the 50, oh sorry, 50, the uh, 7800, the uh, 7900 and 7950X are all going to be benefiting from Vcash, uh, with select models obviously that's not going to be the vanilla processors there's going to be like you know later processors down the line i don't think the six core will um maybe the 5800 and 5900 sorry the 5800 and 5950 will be the only models honestly i'm getting a lot of conf uh, mixed information whether the uh, 12 core processor does get it but personally i'm expecting it probably will so i think there's going to be three SKUs which do benefit um so basically one SKU will not and then three SKUs will that's what i think anyway and now let's move on to the xbox series S. There has been a fascinating discovery, I want to give credit to WCCF Tech for this one, um, that basically speaking, Microsoft have gone in and done some tweaking to the Xbox Series S's development uh, kit. And what this basically means, long and short of it, is that, quote, hundreds, although a specific number, at least as far as I can understand, was not provided, but hundreds of more megabytes of uh, memory are now given to the Xbox Series S developers. Now, as I'm sure you know, the Xbox Series S has considerably less RAM than the Xbox Series X. Um, and yeah, the original leaks were basically that the Xbox Series S 
um, it would contain 12 gigabytes. You can actually Google that yourself. It's pretty commonly known, but of course, eventually it just launched with 10. Now this had a couple of ramifications. The first is obviously just less memory, but the second is because the memory bus itself is narrower, you have less memory bandwidth, although the CPU is still pretty impressive in the machine, and obviously the GPU is what it is. To my personal understanding, one of the biggest complaints from developers has actually been the memory configuration of the Series S. And I believe that actually it was originally intended to be 12 gigabytes and then was cut. Um, so yeah, uh, it was cut basically for cost reasons. And this is not, you know, some incredible like smear against Microsoft. This happens all of the time in console manufacturing something gets cut something gets nerfed something gets tweaked or left on the you know wish list because it's just not possible at a target uh, price or whatever it's a shame 12 gigabytes wasn't included in the series s i still i still feel the machine is actually pretty damn good i have several friends who have bought a series s as like games pass fodder and I think if you have no desire whatsoever to buy a high-end gaming system or a gaming system at all, like a PC, excuse me, um, and your predominant way of gaming is, let's say, a PlayStation 5, and you're kind of just interested in some of the Xbox games, then it could be a good option. Obviously, you know, Series X is high resolution and all of that stuff, but not everyone can justify it or not everyone needs it. So, yeah, I'm going to be interested to see how this affects games. It's also going to be interesting if developers go in and release a patch to take advantage of this additional memory. Now, hundreds, as you know, it's not very specific. So, is it like 200 megabytes? Is it 300 megabytes? Is it 900 megabytes? I don't know. I'll be interested to see how all of that plays out, though. And now, let's mo move on to the RTX 40 series. Yep, there are yet more updates for the RTX 40 series. This is going to continue, guys, because, quite honestly, we are getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to launch. So, updates are going to come thick and fast. And yes, that's what she said. Um, long story short, the RTX 40 series is now getting to the point where... I think it won't be too long before we get real leaks. And by real leaks, I mean, you know, real photos of the cards, real, you know, die shots, real, you know, a specific number of benchmarks in games. Now, of course, we've already had some benchmarks which have popped up. Uh, and I want to get into some very intriguing uh, updates, actually. One of which concerns the AD102 full fat die. AGF here, as you can see in a tweet, has basically stated that um, at under 600 watts, well, you <laughs> see the score yourself in time spy extreme, and that's a pretty extreme score, which is kind of nuts. Furthermore, AGF has also mentioned uh, that there are some updates concerning the power of the various SKUs. So the 4070 is at 250 watts. This actually matches my information from yesterday. The 4080 is 380 watts, and the 490 is at 420 watts. Now, this could be slightly off. I'm kind of hearing different figures from different people, so that seems to be the rough targets around those levels. And the performance, obviously, of these cards is still up in the air. There are a lot of different configurations. It could depend on, you know, what nvidia decides to crank different speeds at there seems to be still multiple different configurations of multiple different cards in fact uh copy t7 kimmy has confirmed that there has actually been a nerf in specifications for the 4080 and basically speaking we're looking at 9728 uh, CUDA cores so this is actually a cut in terms of the number of sms it's gone from 80 uh, from the previous specification all the way down, 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 down to just 76. Now, how much of a difference that makes in performance is very hard to know because you could say to yourself, well, gosh, that's actually a pretty profound cut, right? I mean, we're looking at 10,240 down to this number. That's quite a considerable cut. However, you have to ask yourself other questions. Like, if they're keeping the TDP of the board the same, does that mean that they can run the cores at higher speeds, therefore the caches and other elements of the GPU? The answer is, I don't know. Um, 
And we could look at old times by extreme scores. We could start doing guessing. But the problem is, A, those scores are rounded up. B, we don't know the, the state of the drivers. And C, does it only affect times by extreme? What about games? What about different workloads? We don't know. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of different information at the moment for RTX 40. I think we're going to start hearing the same thing for RDNA 3 very soon. I think that AMD are getting closer to... Well, basically being the position aimed, uh, sorry, NVIDIA are with the RTX 40 series. With that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Kind of a shorter one today, but with that said, have an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.